Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 54 of Sold with Updike Pew. I'm Jeff Updike. And I'm Weston Pew. And we've got a great show. We've got three amazing homes, um, some that you want to sit down and listen to and probably check out online because there's so much about these. But before we jump into that, I think there's some interesting news that has just come up last week with the Fed. Yeah, Fed uh, interest rate reduction once again. And, you know, when Jeremy was on talking about this just a couple of weeks ago, he mentioned during that conversation that yeah. there was potentially this going to happen. And, you know, it, it really helps the consumers in a lot of ways because the uh, it, it helps, obviously helps people that might have a higher interest rate get in a position to refinance. Uh, and sometimes even those small interest rate hikes or, excuse me, interest rate reductions right. uh, help people qualify for a home when the, before they might not have. Absolutely. And it does make a big difference at rates like this um, when you really start to compare renting versus owning. It does True. make quite a big difference. Mm -hmm. One of the things also that we kind of want to point out that's been on our radar as of recently is wire fraud. Um, and we try to make sure that you get in contact with the title company and that you and us have had a really good conversation before any of that money is transferred. Um, so this is, again, just one of the quick PSAs to double check with your agent and with the title company before we're transferring any funds. Yep, absolutely. And I think we've got one more thing. Ceci, what's happening this Friday? The State, the State Fair. The State Fair. All right. Yes, which means the fair parade is going to be Friday afternoon through downtown. Okay. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Have you been to it? Yeah, I have. Okay, I have not. So, all right. So that sounds like something that you'd be interested in. We'd love to see you all out there. And I think the first house we're going to jump into is going to be 11423 Chicot Drive. Yep. This is a really cool uh, three-bedroom home that's in Eudora Estates. And Eudora used to, Estates is in North Dallas, uh, south of Forest Lane, north of Royal Lane, right off of Hillcrest. It's also referred to as Janmar. Yep. And um, very sought it, after. it is a very, very sought-after neighborhood. Uh, to find something in this neighborhood that is done as nicely as this for this price point is just, I mean, it's a hard to find. It is. And th this is, again, if you're just tuning in or you're relocating from um, not Dallas, this is one of those areas that is really easy to commute to. Mm -hmm. uh, you can go north-south really quickly with 75 and the toll road. Mm -hmm. And then you have really large feeders, Royal, Walnut Hill, that are there. They can get you east and west. Mm -hmm. The good thing, too, is if you have to do commuting and you need to get to the airport, Love Field is probably less than 20 minutes away. Yeah, easily. And then jump on Northwest Highway and you can be at DFW. So really, it's a centrally located, still south of 635. So you're inside of proper Dallas area. Mm -hmm. And this is a really great three bedroom, two and a half bath, two car garage. Uh, it's just under 2,500 square feet, built in 1956. Sits on a really nice, uh, nicely manicured lot. Has great drive up, great curb appeal. Mm -hmm. the, the big trees that you, know, you get in a lot of these older neighborhoods that people really look for. And it's just done immaculately. Yep. So again, this is on 0.374 of an acre. And so that gives you a really large front yard and it gives you additional room for a pool in the backyard. Mm -hmm. This is a ranch style. So it's all on one floor. And you can see right here that we're looking at the um, dining room. And that actually transitions mm -hmm. to what could be they've set up as a second living room. But it also could be a really great office as well. Yeah. There's a lot of flexibility in this uh, this floor plan. And, you know, it's, it's, it's a similar floor plan to what you find in a lot of the homes in North Dallas, but you could very easily make what they have set up as a second living area into the dining room, have a study in the, where they currently have the dining room. You could, I mean, there's just all kinds of flexibility. In yep. it. And as this room shows that they've kept the actual parquet flooring and this one has built ins, but they're done so tastefully. One of the things that you'll notice in this one that they've done a great job is they've actually scaled the lights to be the right size. Mm -hmm. They've done museum finish on the walls and I believe also in the ceiling. So what this does is it allows for the platform to set up as a very clean, open floor plan done really well. And you're going to see in some of the other images how it actually transitions so easily into this um, eating kitchen breakfast. And it's kind of one of those combinations of uh, the old compartmentalized homes that mm -hmm. a lot of people still enjoy, but it because of the way that that bar has been opened into the kitchen or into the living room there, you have that big communal space where if somebody's in the kitchen cooking, right. you, you've got seating there, uh, seating there for people to hang out and talk. So, And this kitchen has been opened up. It's been redone with the Carrera subway tiles, the white uh, quartz countertops. You've got the double ovens built-in microwave. 
What we really like is how wide this is. So this gives you plenty of room for multiple people to be in the kitchen. Everybody knows that when you're in some of those smaller, tighter kitchens, when you have people over or you're just trying to get that meal out, it gets a little more difficult. Yeah, and the room sizes pretty much throughout the home are really generous size. Um, this is the master bedroom. And that is a king size bed, still room for those really nice wide mm -hmm. nightstands on each side so you don't feel crowded there. Um, the the uh, casement windows have all been replaced in this. And so you've got, you've kind of retained that old charm of the crank out windows of the home, but they are all double pane. They're yep. all, the, all recent, replaced recently. Right. Um, but, you know, a lot of, I mean, this, home has really been redone like from the core out it feels like yep and so the bathroom has also been done uh just to kind of point out also the master has two closets one for each and then this is a really well done bathroom with double sinks the good placement of the center light and then you've also got a little uh another room that we just brought up an image of for you just to kind of show how the taste and how the wallpaper mm -hmm. and just how easy it is to set up oh, a room like and this. Look, twin beds. I love twin beds. <laughs> I'm a sucker for twin beds. I don't know why. I always joke and say I always want that in my master yeah. or in my guest bedroom. <laughs> right. Not my master. <laughs> Not my master. Sorry. <laughs> um, the uh, backyard space on this one's really uh, uh, very engaging. It is a, a warm, welcoming place. You've got a lot of room to have the outdoor furniture you see there. Uh, the trees are big enough that they can still support kid swings. Uh, I think that's a 10 foot fence around the backyard. Mm -hmm. It is a really quite private back there. And uh, just as, you know, again, adds to the value of the home because you've created this additional living space and it's, you know, it's very easily accessible. Yep. So the, again, this one is 11423 Chicot Drive. It's a three bedroom, two and a half bath, two car garage, 2460 square feet. And it comes in at 795, which is 32317 a foot. It's a wonderful home, and we want to say thank you so much to Sharon Red for letting us highlight your home. Yep. And then we're going to move over to uh, 6709 Stickter is the next one that we're going to talk about today. This one uh, is not very far away from the the one in Eudora Estates, a little farther south than that. Right. But it is such a, a really great neighborhood there. Uh, you are uh, just off the corner of uh, Hillcrest and Walnut Hill, so you've got great access to any of those restaurants, any of the shopping up and down um, uh, up and down Preston uh, up and down Preston Road. Uh, there at Walnut Hill, there are so I mean we have lunch at the Royal China there once a week. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but there's just great shopping and great access to pretty much anything. So this one is also um, close to St. Mark's, which is a really great school. Uh, we were just talking about St. Mark's. Um, really exceptional school that focuses on smaller classrooms. Mm -hmm. So if you're into looking for a school that would be close by, I would say this is definitely one to look into. Yeah. And uh, the house itself is really uh, just I mean, it's got such a great curb appeal. This is a, a Tuscan two-story home that has every every feeling in it has the old world Italian feeling. Yep. From the actual garage doors that are the wood and insulated on the inside um, up to the double um, arched entry door, this home has just everything that you're wanting. We really kind of struggled on this one. There were so many amazing images. Um, whittling it down to 10 was really difficult. Was. Um, I would encourage you to actually look this one up. We'll, the, the link to it will be in the comments. Um, and as you can see, as you walk into the home, you're greeted with this amazing um, 11 foot ceilings with the uh, uh, trade and um, beams. Box beams. Yeah. Box beams. Mm -hmm. uh, it seats easily eight here, um, 10 even more so. Um, this one is also when it transitions into the family room, the family room has windows all on the back that actually look into the covered patio. And these are really large living spaces. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the covered patio is, uh, that you could see just beyond the windows there uh, is has an outdoor kitchen that's been added mm -hmm. to it, has an outdoor fireplace. So again, you've really created that extra living space. And speaking of kitchens, this kitchen right here is a double island kitchen. And it has, uh, let's see, that's two, three ovens, eight burners, built-in microwave, built-in warming drawer. Two dishwashers. Two dishwashers and a partridge in a pear tree. Right. <laughs> so uh, this is amazing. Uh, the granite is one of the ones that we look at and we think, you know, that's something to keep just because you can tell it is 
from a really expensive quarry. And it goes up very well with the house. Uh, the uh, they've used the the bigger tile in the, uh, mm -hmm. in the kitchen and in the dining area here, which is uh, you know just continues to lend to that feel. Uh, they've got the 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 really heavy dark wood uh, trim throughout the uh, throughout the kitchen and throughout the dining room that, that continue to add to that. And uh, I mean, you really there there are very few things you would want to do when you move into this. And so this is kind of uh, what we wanted to highlight was the workmanship and craftsmanship that the house um, has from front door to back door. And these are the cabinets and you can see right here that you've got really probably custom on-site built cabinets. Uh, you can see that the mm -hmm. actual uh, walk-in shower has body jets. Mm -hmm. It's really an amazing place. And what we're going to show you in some of the next ones um, are images of some of the rooms that we thought were really spectacular. So. This is a, uh, a this climate is my controlled. Bedroom. This is for Jeff. You'll find Jeff. <laughs> it is climate controlled, um, and it is situated just under the stairs mm -hmm. and has its own entry that actually mirrors the front doors. Mm -hmm. And so this is one of the. This is an, a perfect example of the quality and level that you're getting with mm -hmm. this house. So um, as we're going to look in the next images as well, we wanted to point out how the living space works with both the inside and the outside. So one of the things that I have fallen in love with is outdoor fireplaces, mm -hmm. because I feel like in Texas, it's one of the things that you're really going to use mm -hmm. a lot. At least three or four months out of the year. At least. I would use it more. I think I would use it all the time. I just think it's really <laughs> awesome. Um, so this, this is done so well. And the way that it transitions into giving you additional outdoor dining space, um, and then that wonderful setup for the um, outdoor kitchen. One of the things I don't want to miss out and point out is that this one actually has a pool for the, I mean, a, a bathroom, mm -hmm. half bath for mm -hmm. the pool, and that um, the balcony that you're going to see in this next picture is off of the game room upstairs. Yeah, it did, the, the layout on this home is really amazing with the, the master bedroom and another bedroom down, and then three other bedrooms, each with ensuite baths upstairs. The big game room, it, it, it is an entertainer's delight. It is. It, and and I, this would be one of those houses where everybody wants to come over to your house. Mm -hmm. So if you're one of those group, if you're a family that wants to have everybody in, this is the house for you. Yep. And the best thing about this house is that it will be open on Sunday from two to four. So if you'd like to swing by and take a look at it, this is your time. Two to four on Sunday. And again, this is 6709 Stitcher. It is a five bedroom, five with two half baths. Three car garage, 6,500 square feet, built in 2006. Comes in at 1885, and that's 301 a foot. Yes, sir, it is. And we wanted to say thank you to Tamara Torres for letting us uh, talk about her home today. It is amazing. And it's also co listed with Shelly Setzer. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much, Shelly, as well. Um, the next one that we're going to move to, we're going to move into a different, or actually come south just a little bit. And this is pretty close to Bluffview. Mm -hmm. um, and this one is 8423 Ridge Leah. Mm -hmm. 8423 Ridge, Ridgely. Ridgely. Uh, Ridgely, uh, this is a, a really spectacular home. It's got to be one of the nicer homes that I think we've seen lately. And it uh, it is such a great location. Um, I lived in, not very far from here, and uh, the Bluff, Bluffview neighborhood is you know, has, is one of those neighborhoods that has always been so well financially insulated mm -hmm. from everything <laughs> around it. Um, you will see that this is right next door to Love Field. I live probably maybe a little bit farther away from Love Field, but on that same side, and I get practically no noise from that whatsoever. Yeah. And so this is a really, and the other thing too, is he pointed out Northwest Highway is right there um, and Love Field, mm -hmm. but you'd grab Northwest Highway and you head out um, west and that'll turn into 183 and you can be a DFW as well. Mm -hmm. So this is one of those great ones. We actually had clients that were but had a contract on Lakewood and then something popped up in this neighborhood and they actually opted to go with the one in this neighborhood just for the simple fact of its proximity to some of the, the work that they were interested in doing. Mm -hmm. So this one is br new construction. Um, 2016 it was built. It's a five bedroom. Again, five bath point two. Wait till you hear where the second one is, and it's a two-car garage. It's 48, 16 square feet, and it really is as amazing as it looks. Yeah, the uh, the, the curb appeal on this is fantastic. They've used the paver stones mm -hmm. uh, with the black or the gray Tejas between them, which you know always uh, it, it always just gives such a different feel to the house. Yep, and one of the things that I think is always important as we look at these homes. Um, and it's not always you get to see, but this is actually a builder's own personal home. And I always think it's important because I think that builders on their own homes, um, there's probably a few more extras that you get within the house. Mm -hmm. I think that sometimes you just by luck and default, you get maybe a construction that's a little bit tighter. This is a great builder, builds up and down in Preston Hollow. 
Um, and uh, I think they also did some in Midway as yeah, well. Yeah, I think, uh, and uh, uh, Sharon was telling us that, that I think he's built three or four homes in this same neighborhood yeah. also. So, I mean, he's somebody that was familiar with how the house needs to sit on the lot. Uh, this does have that really popular open floor plan where it opens from the kitchen to the bar to the dining area, yeah. open to the living area. A great, another great entertaining home. One of the things that I love, love, love about this is that they have a built-in coffee uh, maker right there, and that's what is directly above one of the ovens. It is amazing. Um, they've done a really good job with the white oak floors. They've also done them in a matte finish, but to actually add um, a little bit of a design element, the stairs are in a darker stain, so mm -hmm. they kind of offset and become an element of architectural interest in this home as well. This is actually the master bedroom. Again, this master bedroom, we did not, again, so many good pictures. We didn't get a picture of the closet. This is one of the big closets that I love. And it also has a really great combination um, bathroom. Tell us a little bit what you thought was the best feature about this master bathroom. Oh, my gosh. It was... Uh the it had the uh, the walk-in shower, which had the two shower heads, mm -hmm. and I believe the rain head in the center of it. And you know, it, it's interesting to me that we in a lot of the newer construction, we find houses that have those really big showers, but they only set them up for one, one person, and it <laughs> does, it just doesn't make sense to me. So, it, so this one didn't do that. This one really took advantage of it. Uh, the sculpture tub, which was actually nestled up against the wall, mm -hmm. which uh, is kind of a little bit of a, a change from what we see. And I actually like this better. Um, just that. And then if you look right there, there is an actual door that goes to the outside, and that is to a deck. And what's out there is an outdoor shower. This is the first home that we've had on the show yep. that had an outdoor shower. It is a private outdoor shower. It's enclosed. It's on te uh, Trek decking, so you don't have to worry about staining, sanding, mm -hmm. splinters. Um, so it is a really cool little extra in this in this weather. I think it would be great to be out there mm -hmm. for this. Um, the other thing about the bathrooms um, and bedroom combinations in this house is that we're looking at ensuite again, just mm -hmm. like we did on Stichter. Um, and one of the other things that you're going to notice is that they've actually given the bedrooms, um, not all the bedrooms have tubs, which is really one of those things that we like to see because I don't feel like right now as you get into multi-generational homes that everybody needs a tub. I think mm -hmm. that having the ability to walk into the shower is really important now. Mm -hmm. Yes, I would agree. Um, fantastic. Uh, this is the... Uh, uh, upstairs study. Upstairs study, yeah, right. <clears throat> yep, and this is actually uh, opens up just gently to the um, downstairs um, via the uh, half pony wall. And then what we also have is outdoor outdoor covered mm -hmm. entertaining area. Yeah, once again, they've done a really great job of creating that outdoor environment for the for this house. Um, this one does have a really, as you can see, a really good sized kitchen in it. Um, the, all of those windows are just, they're almost floor to ceiling windows. So you get all of that real natural light uh, back into the living room right there. And one of the things just to point out real quick is that the material that he used on the countertops is actually leathered um, granite and that there was also a built-in space that would hold the TV for outdoor and mm -hmm. protect it so you didn't have to cover it. Yeah. Really, really thinking all the way through that. Yep. Yeah. So 8423 Ridgely, uh, five bedroom, five full baths, two half baths, uh, 4,816 square feet, uh, builder's own home built in 2016, listed at a million, 35,000, and that comes in at just under 215 a square foot. That's a great price per square yeah. foot. I want to say thank you so much to Sharon Red for allowing us to bring that house on. It was amazing. It was. Thank you, Sharon. Yep. All right. Time to transition to the next segment. Yeah. So what are what are we going to talk about? All right. So in the second segment, we're going to bring back one of our favorites, um, Michael Bosco from Safe Haven Pest Control. He's going to come on because now is the second day of fall, I believe, and it is time for us, and we're putting it in our newsletter, so if you want to know what our other suggestions are, it is really time to start getting the house ready for fall. And so one of the things that we wanted to talk about is how do you protect your house from critters? And so we brought Michael on to kind of help us with that. Thanks, Thanks for, for having coming me on, back, Michael. Weston. Appreciate it. You bet. So one of the things that we, when we were on in the spring, we were talking more about the insects and like kind of getting ready because here they come, they're molting, they're actually mating, and they're really going out. That's right. But we're not going to talk about that today. Nope. We got cooler weather coming, so we got critters coming. We got critters with coats that we're going to talk about today. So um, some of the things that um, we were talking about um, that to me were a little surprising is you were t sharing with us the um, how small a hole can be and something can get in. And this was, to me, a little alarming. Yeah. Basically, if you can put two fingers... <laughs> in a gap 
then you've got enough room for a rat to, to work its way in. And actually a mouse, you're talking about a, a finger's width, so it doesn't take much. It doesn't. And to me, that's like, that's a little alarming because I feel like sometimes even in new home construction, I see gaps that are left and I'm like, I could put my finger in some of those. So you're saying that that is actually an opening large enough for mice. It absolutely is. And they take advantage of it way more than we really want them to. And, and I think that that's unnerving because I think that um, most of us think that that's not really safe as far as like them being in there. And you kind of pointed out some of the things like what they can do, the air quality, and also what they can do as far as like causing other issues with the wiring. Right. Well, obviously they're defecating, they're <laughs> peeing, they're doing yes. all their bodily functions uh, in there, but they are chewing. They're, mm -hmm. they're rats. R rodents have to chew. Their uh, their teeth actually continue to grow. Right. And so uh, they'll chew on the timbers, the structure of the home, but unfortunately they do a lot of chewing actually on the wires themselves. And so you got a real concern for fire. And, and I think that we... Um, we get a nerve because they're in the house and because they're scurrying around and we think, oh my gosh, we don't want them chewing up. But then we don't realize that they could cause, they could be an indirect cause for larger catastrophic events. And that is the fire that could jump out. They do. And not only the fire, but uh, a lot of new construction is being built with the, the PEX, the plastic uh -huh. piping. And so you, we're seeing a lot of uh, water damage that's also being caused by their chewing. So it goes even beyond the fire. Now you're talking about wire da uh, water damage. So that and, starts to add up really fast. And you're absolutely right because PEX tubing, I think, is predominantly run in the attic. They that's actually, right. It's so not it's run different. through the slab. Right. That's right. So that is a huge problem. Yes, and uh, which is fantastic for plumbing and construction. It keeps everything yeah. above. You don't have to, the penetration to okay. the slab, which is a termite issue. Right. Uh, but now it's uh, in danger of uh, rodent chewing activity. Okay. So these are, these are important things. Um, and, and I would say, like, even in my life that it gets really busy. And so that, would someone call someone like you and say, hey, can you evaluate, like, what's going on with my house. I want to make sure I don't get these animals. Yes, and we actually provide that service okay. at no cost. We are happy to come out, walk the property, look for uh, places where they can gain access, Okay. Um, look for activity and find out is it a current active problem or was it a past issue. Okay. And either way, we can offer up a bid to do the work to do the closing. Right. And if there's an active problem to actually do the uh, trapping out. Okay. So you're saying even if somebody comes and calls and says, Hey, I should have called you weeks, maybe a month ago, but now I hear things you can address the animal in the attic. Yes. And not only do we need to address the animal, but we also absolutely need to solve the problem. This solution is actually closing off the access point and that's how we solve it. Uh, if you, if you just get rid of the critters, either by rodenticide uh -huh. or by trapping, you're, you're going to be right back in the same position within months mm -hmm. or, uh, you know, a year down the road, no question, you're going to have more critters. And I think it's kind of important that um, as homeowners um, that we know, like, I, we always see the droppings and we always assume that any little black dropping is going to be from a furry legged friend. Right. And you were explaining that that's not always the case, which I was... It makes sense now, but right. I would have assumed that anytime I saw a little black thing that I was going to think that was an, an animal. And you're saying it's Yeah, not. we have geckos. Uh, <laughs> and they're very common. Uh, the, the geckos will leave a dropping that's extremely similar to a, a, a rodent, uh, a rat. And so there's some telltale signs okay. that a homeowner can look and see. They'll leave, uh, the, the dropping actually will have a uric, uric acid white dropping, kind of like a, a bird has. Okay. And so that little white... A component is a telltale sign that it's not a rat. Uh, the other part, which the homeowner may not be comfortable with, is they can actually kind of crush it. And if it falls apart, uh, then it's going to be a, a gecko because it's just uh, the exoskeleton of insects versus what rats and mice eat. Got it. So if you want to test the consistency of the pellet, <laughs> you can know if you've got geckos or rodents That's with right. fur. That's a little do-it-yourself <laughs> option. Do it yourself. You heard it here. Uh, one of the other things that I thought was interesting is because we always talk about how during the spring we see the molting of the termites. And so I asked you, I said, so now are we in a situation where termites aren't active in the fall? I was really surprised by your answer. 
Yeah, it's uh, they don't go away, right? They're 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 either there or they're not. And if they're there, they're going to continue to be there. So it's not like they come and go throughout the season. So um, the only the people tend to think of termites as a spring issue because that's when they're swarming. Right. When the colonies get large enough. That's when you see them the most. That's when they, they have winged reproductives mm -hmm. and they come out of the wall and say, surprise, I'm here. Otherwise, they're within the wall and people don't realize the damage is occurring. So it's uh, unfortunately an unknown damage causing problem. Interesting. So the other thing too that you brought up, and I thought that was really interesting, is that when the wood is damp, that that we is talked an, about leaks. Yeah, we did. Yes. That that's an attraction for the termites. Yeah, if you've had water problems from rats doing it, or or uh, maybe a roof failure or some situation right. where you're getting water, that that moisture level in the wood actually is going to be very attractive to termites, and so they somehow have an ability to find that that moist wood, and that's going to be. It's more palatable to them. They right. need a certain moisture level in the wood. Okay. And so that's going to be the wood they're going to go after. So that's very interesting. So even though um, I would say that it would be worth having Safe Haven or whoever you use to treat your house to come out if you have an active water leak after the water leak has been addressed, just to make sure that there's nothing going on. Like if it's been going on for quite some time, this would be something that we would want to like double check. It's if you have an inspection at any point after that, it's something you will definitely want your inspector to be to know about because it's a, it's an area of concern that they need to sp uh, spend more time addressing or looking at. And the, I think the last thing that I wanted to hit it on was that um, we've talked several times, people um, are under the misconception that I bought a new home and therefore I don't have to have it inspected. And you brought up the point that it's even worth having your company or another company like you to come look at new construction to verify that it doesn't have unnecessary openings at soffits. Yeah, we did. We talked about new construction where uh, the buildings for a lot of the returns on the roofs, in particular uh -huh. the soffits, actually are code to for that to be off the the roof, off the shingle, and that tends to leave about an inch gap between uh -huh. the soffit and the roof return, and that is a very likely spot of where a rat, mm -hmm. mice, and squirrels will, will enter a home. And so, yeah, new construction does not necessarily mean rodent proof. Right. It means that you're probably going to be able to keep the, the, the rain out. Roofers and construction <laughs> are all built around water uh -huh. and air. And unfortunately, uh, if, you're, if your attic is not uh, a total envelope right. uh, with foam, uh, then it the, the roof's intent is to just keep water out, not keep rats out. And a lot of people don't realize this, but a lot of times the new home construction is coming in an area that has never been developed before. And so it's woodier or maybe it's up against a creek. Mm -hmm. And what you're doing is you're actually disrupting the natural habitat for the little rodents. And so they are That's their home. That's their home. You just built on their home. And so they, they're homeless until the point at which you build them a new home. And then they have moved That's in. Right. <laughs> and it's very shocking. And I, we've seen it in lots of um, inspection reports where we've come back and seen um, some houses maybe only three years old and there's a, a, a surprising amount of droppings. So yes, uh, rats, uh, at least in Dallas Fort Worth area, have, population seems to be getting larger and larger exponentially by the by the year. So unfortunately, it's a problem that more and more homeowners are addressing. Yes, and need to address for safety reasons and fire, water damage, and and, and all the allergens that they um, cause that like we were talking about earlier. And this is not the first time that we've heard this. We've actually heard several other inspectors talk about how they're surprised at the number of droppings that are indicators that there are. Mm -hmm. And they won't use the word infestation, but they are going to say that there are um, a significant number of droppings sometimes. Yes. So these are some things to keep up with. Um, we found a little funny uh, uh, image that we wanted to show you because this has actually happened to me, I feel <laughs> like. Um, the first one says, when you see a roach, when you... When the roach flies and then when the roach lands on you. And I've actually <laughs> had one land on my head before. <laughs> and it was, uh, yes, I tried to come out of the bathroom by myself. It was, there was, no, it's not good. Yeah, uh, there's some bad things that happen in those situations. So. It is. And it's a three-inch roach and it has, has you climbing Such a impact. wall. <laughs> it's a huge impact. It's ridiculous. So, well, thank you so much for coming on the show, Michael. We're going to show his information. If you'd like to get in touch with him,
This is the contact information to use, phone number, email address. You can also follow them on Facebook and Instagram. Thank you so much, Michael. We have appreciated it. Thanks, you Weston. Show. Appreciate you, you guys having me out. Thank you. So that was what we have for today. It's been a great show. If you'd like more information about any of the homes or need to get in touch with Michael, you've got his information. Contact us in the comments below, and we'd be happy to hear from you. Just great show. A wrap. Yeah, that we was great. did it. So thank you all very much for tuning in today. We've really enjoyed the time with you. Uh, if you're not watching this live on Facebook, go to our Facebook account, like it. You'll get updates about when our show's coming on every week, 3.30. We'd love to see you here. Our Instagram account has, <clears throat> excuse me, lots of photos of homes that we have for sale, things that are going on, tips and tricks. Visit our website, updikepew.com. There's a lot of detailed information there about just the process of buying and selling a home. You can set up searches. Last of all, homeprice.fyi. If you'd like to get a value on a piece of property, go over there, put your address in, put a couple of other pieces of info, and you will instantly get a value on your property. Last of all, reach out to us in all the, tr the traditional ways. Our phone number is 214-377-2223. Thank you. Remember, we want to be your realtors for life.